In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to transform a string variable into a numeric variable in SPSS. The first thing to know is that any data where you have a letter in the data field, SPSS will consider that to be a string variable. A string variable is something that has limitations on what you can do with it. Uh, if you want to fully analyze your data, you need to have it uh, coded as a numeric variable. And uh, that'll become clear as I demonstrate uh, what I'm showing here. So let's say that you start with an example um, survey. And I've got this example survey set up on Google Forms. You can see that it's a four point scale where one is strongly disagree and four is strongly agree. Very basic kind of survey. Um, I don't have any numbers typed in except for the first one. And in fact, for the purposes of this demonstration, let's take out the numbers. Let's assume that you did the survey without having numbers in place. You just have the words. So when you export this into an Excel file from Google Forms, you're not going to see the numbers. Uh, and I've already done this, exporting it into Excel. But you see are just the, uh, the phrases strongly disagree, strongly agree, etc. You do get the item headers up here, item one, item two, item three, item four, etc. Um, and those correspond to the fields here, item one, item two, item three, item four. So I've got four items with a string variable description of the response options. Um, when you go to export these four responses, and by the way, those four responses are all from me, I just went in and did it four times, sort of randomly selecting different response options. But what you get when you export that is this Excel file uh, with, the, uh, with the words instead of the numbers. Now, I guess you could have originally set it up so that it had numbers instead of words. And uh, you'd have to have instructions on top that said, you know, one equals strongly disagree, two equals uh, disagree, three equals agree, four equals strongly agree. If you had that information up here uh, so that your participants understood what the numbers actually mean, then you could bypass all of this. But again, for the purposes of this demonstration, let's assume you didn't do that and you have uh, at this point an Excel file that looks like this. When you, um, when you open the Excel file into SPSS, um, there are a few steps involved, and I'm not going to show that. Let's just assume that you've copied and pasted to keep it simple. Um, so I'm going to copy that information. I'm going to paste it into SPSS. And you can see that I've got the, uh, the letter information here. Uh, and I lose my item uh, numbers on top, item 1, item 2, item 3. So the very first thing that I want to do is I want to go to the bottom down here and toggle over to variable view and call these item one, item two, etc. And you can see that it's it's already identified as a string variable because of the letters. So SPSS will automatically see that you have letters in the data fields uh, and because of that it calls it a string variable. So I'm going to change all of these to item one, item two, item three and so forth. Notice that I do not have any spaces in between the word item and the number because SPSS will not allow me. Let's try it and see what happens. So I've got a space here, item 3, and if I try to go forward, it does not let me. It says that that's an illegal character. Having a space or anything like that uh, is not permitted in the variable name. Okay, so I've changed the variable names. Um, I'm not going to change the string variable type. If you click on this box here and then the mini box, you see that you can uh, adjust the variable type. I'm not going to play with that, at least not yet. Let's go back to data view. And so now I can see the uh, value labels in the form of words, but I get to see the column header in the form of my item name, item one, item two, item three. And if you hover over that, it tells you that it's nominal data with a string variable type. 
So the next step is go to transform, recode into same variable. And this will, this will be how we change in a batch all of these at once. You do not want to do this by hand because if you do it by hand, if you go in and change this to a one, this to a two, this to a three, and this to a four, uh, you know, eventually if you have enough data points, you're going to lose some information because you entered the data incorrectly. Uh, and uh, we don't like errors, so do it this way. Go to uh, transform, recode into same variable, highlight the four different items. If you don't know how to do that, uh, just hold the shift key down. So highlight the first one, and then while holding the shift key, you can identify, you can uh, highlight all of them at the same time. Move them over, and then in old and new values, for strongly agree, no, uh, strongly disagree is the first one. And make sure the spelling is right too, because otherwise we'll not recognize it. Strongly disagree equals one. So um, this is the new coding right here. This is what's going to change. Next, uh, disagree. It's going to have a value of two. Higher scores represent greater agreement, as we can see here. So one, two, three, four. The next one is agree, that gets a value of three. And strongly agree gets a value of four. Now I know this is not going to work, uh, but let me show you what happens if I don't have the proper case. I'm going to change the capital A to a lowercase a and use that. Now that's not going to work. It's going to, it's going to fail to recognize the strongly agrees. But I just want to demonstrate to you what happens when that happens. I click continue, hit OK, and you can see that all the numbers are now in place except for the 4, which is the strongly agree. And the reason why I didn't copy over was because I used the lowercase a instead of capital A. So let's go back. Go to recode into same variables. Click all the new values. And for this one, the strongly agree, with the variable highlighted over here, go into the text box, change that lowercase a to a capital A, and now you can hit the change button. The change is now, the change button is now uh, highlighted so that you can use it. Otherwise, it's ghosted out and you can't use it. Now we can see that um, we have the proper capitalization here for strongly agree, and we're just going to run it again. Nothing else is going to change only strongly agree becomes a four. So that's, uh, that's basically it. That's how you change the uh, string variable into a numeric variable. But we also want to go into variable view. And for each one of these, you see that it maintained its status as a string variable. Uh, and we need to change that to numeric. Uh, once you've changed one of them, you can copy that and paste that command into the other fields, which is kind of nice. And um, for some reason, I'm not sure why, but it recognizes the second, third, and fourth items as scales, but the first one it's considering to be a nominal type of data. We don't want it to be nominal. We'll call it a scale. That makes it interval in nature. And so now, uh, with the numbers in place instead of the words, and with the variable uh, type adjusted from uh, string variable into numeric and changing this one into a scale. Now we're ready to go. Um, one other thing, let's say you wanted to see the, the variable labels. Um, so you want to see strongly disagree, strongly agree, etc. A one with strongly disagree, and we're going to put that in here. So under, uh, rather here, under value, uh, you see that it has none. Once you click that box, click the mini box, you get this pop-up, and now we can put in strongly disagree. 
which is the, uh, the um, value label for um, the response option of number one. For two, it is disagree. For three, it is agree. And for four, it is strongly agree. Once you have those all in place, make sure that they're all correct, hit OK. And now you can see that we've got these values coded uh, for the numbers in question for the response options. You can see that here. You see them all here. Uh, but the other ones we don't have in place. So uh, simply click the first one, copy it, and you can paste it in for the rest of them. Now, go back to data view. You can see that the numbers have not changed. The numbers are still there. Um, but if you wanted to see the uh, value labels instead of the numbers, you could go to View, Value Labels, and you can go back and forth. See, that's your toggle right there. So if you wanted to check to make sure that this was correct, that a 4 is strongly agree, and a 3 is agree, and so forth, just do that right here. And uh, you can check that and then go back. And SPSS, either way you have it, SPSS will now recognize the, numer the numeric coding of the variables. OK, well, that's it. Hope you find that uh, useful in your research. Thanks, bye.